This video contains Roy Kent level undeniably adult language. You have been warned. Important Pulitzer Wise prize winning question here, but yes. do people offer you shortbread biscuits more or less these days? Right. And what is, is your current no, relationship with This is no word of a lie. Yesterday on the flight over here, the captain of the BA flight I was on came and found me in my seat. And you know those little pre packed little shortbread biscuits? He came over and went, I just thought I'd do, uh, I can't do Scottish. I just, thought, I just thought I'd offer these up in case the biscuits on the show don't taste nice. <laughs> he didn't say hello. He didn't tell me what his name was. I obviously saw from all his pippage that he was the captain of the, and I was like, should you not be flying this plane? Thank goodness for co-pilots. Thank goodness for autopilots, because yes, I mean, that is a bold gag. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Didn't tell me what his name was or anything. Just launched into a biscuit gag. Love it. In <laughs> but I love head, things your, like that. I love the idea that in that moment you had your laptop out and you just quickly shut it because, you know, it's what you like to do. Quick laptop <laughs> shut. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just snap it shut. Least, I'm hoping for at least 12 in this new series. <laughs> I know. Well, um, she's in a very different place. Did you pick a favourite episode of Ted Lasso, or is that too cruel a question? On a personal level, in terms of Rebecca's journey through it, it would have to be the funeral episode for me, um, because not only R Rebecca being very honest with her mother, also the Rick Astley eulogy, which was literally a thorn in my side, and then I loved it, um, but also everyone else's little kind of vignette scenes throughout it like don't Danny Rojas in his sore feet and Roy and Keeley talking about the apple you know I'm, I'm avenge me avenge me Keeley and eating an apple from the tree all of that I thought it was the most beautifully and lovingly romantically shot funeral episode I've ever seen um but then to be in I would say the gala episode from season one because it's when you really well it's the first time Rebecca sees Rupert and the audience sees Rupert and he is the reason why she has become how she's become. I've got a friend who's obsessed with the show as well and her question she was desperate to ask you is why is Rebecca's ex so shitty to her when he was the one that was the shithead all caps? Right all caps too right because some people what's your friend's name? Helen. Because Helen some people are just assholes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And they bring everyone down and their toxic energy ripples through your bloodstream until you say no more and get it the F out. Well said. Um, I'm going to leave you with a silly question again, which is, do you have particular British turns of phrase that you love to fox Americans with? Classic ones like chuffed and bodged and bagsy and playing a blinder. I mean, I feel like we do that all the time on this show. In fact, Jason got me to keep one in at the end of a scene. I, we, he and I were discussing how the scene was going to go. And then I go, and then you pop off at the end. And he was like, keep that in. So he walks down. I go, go on, off you pop. I just, he and I are constantly keeping little bits and pieces in like that. I say oh. them and he goes, off you pop. You pop up, you pop off. <laughs> yeah, I feel That's... like there's there's quite a few Waddinghamisms that have, have come into Rebecca Welton's. <laughs> Beautiful. And, and now I must pop off. So you off pop I pop. Off, off you pop. Um, <laughs> you can make it sound quite intimidating. Pop off, mate. So why don't you pop right off? Now. <laughs> uh, Big I was what? Oh, come off it. Don't believe you for a second. True. Um, can I just say how proud I was of you, not only for winning the Emmy, but for the speech? Because the double privilege thing I adored, but also a couple of perfect F-bombs. I was uh, very, very specifically told I'm not allowed to swear, so um, this speech is going to be fucking short. Um, give Man. you a little... Thank you so much. That. that means a lot. I mean, as long as I can bring some F-bombs to the world, haven't I done <laughs> the important work? So... That audition tape you sent yeah. to Bill Lawrence, that went yeah. well. Turned out all right, didn't it? Or they just couldn't be bothered to keep looking. <laughs> He'll do. Yeah. That's the beginning of any great career. Um, <laughs> how often do you get people on the street shout at you, he's here? 
he's there, he's every effing where. Do, do you get that most days or just some days? Do you know what? I don't get that as much as you might think. I've, I've had it quite a few times. I, when I do stand-up, I've had it quite a few times when I come on stage. It's sort of... Uh, I get it less in supermarkets. But I have had I have had a couple of weird interactions where someone I had it once where a guy walked past me and he went, fuck off, as he walked past me. And at first I was like, What's happening? And then I realized, oh, this is a fan. <laughs> a really big fan. One that yeah. thinks it's gonna really work. I've got to yeah. say, whilst I do love the swearing, my favorite little sort of Roy beat is him growling at the kid when he's getting his ticket. Well, that moment is like, we talked about that. It's like Monsters, Inc. It's like everyone's scared of Roy Kid, Roy Kent, but kids aren't. They they see him. That's nice. Yeah. I like in, in season one when Hannah is singing Let It Go, that Roy, without knowing it, is mouthing along because he knows it so well because of Phoebe. Yeah. Stuff like that I like. So, so cute. And you must have seen it, and just to remind you of it, of this Venn diagram of... <laughs> <laughs> he's here there yeah. every effing where Roy Kent yeah really it is amazing all this shit isn't it there will be tattoos of that on people yeah I hope they look good me too uh, yeah. I've got to say there is no better photograph on anyone's Instagram page than you in a bin next to Oscar the Grouch that is there's no greater moment in my life I did Sesame Street and I genuinely think like it was the best day of my life. And, I, and I've and i thought about it a lot. And I do think if ever I have kids and my kid says to me, was the day I was born the best day of your life? I'll be like, yeah, it was nice. But have you ever met fucking Elmo? It's but, a close second. Yeah. I love it. Close. You, but you're but not Elmo. <laughs> I was wondering, though, what other surreal moments must be up there for you? Because FIFA alone, being in FIFA 2023, oh, yeah. that, that's incredible. He's a great manager and an even better man. And if you tell him I said that, I will brain you. The yeah. fact that Nike are now doing the shirts, other yeah. massive sports companies are available. Yeah. I, I, I can't quite believe it. You know, it was Either one of, of the most, I mean, there's so many, there's been so many. It's really, really wild, particularly because genuinely we thought no one would watch this show. And I, I really mean that. That isn't like being humble. Like me and Jason on the last day of season one, were like, well, been fun. no one will probably watch it, but we had a nice time, you know, like yeah. we did a thing in season two when we filmed at Wembley Stadium and we had the, we had fucking Wembley Stadium to ourselves there's a scene you've seen the scene where we all walk out on the into the stadium and all looking around that was like real like people cried like it was really quite powerful you know what I mean I I can believe it I fully can believe it I also love that West Ham are now fully on board and there's this whole crossover it's just amazing yeah um my last thought for you is how happy are you to see people get really confused about Britishisms because seeing the likes of Rob McElhenney get confused by squeaky bum time <laughs> is fantastic. What are your other go-to words that you love confusing Americans with, like chuffed or bodged or bagsy? Or... Uh, we, I think it's taken a while for them to get on board with fit. Oh, look at her, she's fucking fit! Not meaning uh, well-toned. It's taken a long time. Like, I, I often like, use the word fit and people are like, oh, they go to the gym. I'm like, they don't have to go to the gym. To Sometimes you've just got it. Sometimes you've got that Brett Goldstein, Ali Plum fitness. You know? There's a couple of fit um, guys talking to each other on the radio. <laughs> just a couple of fit guys. we got to go. Thank you so much, Brett. Always hey, nice to see you, man. Nice to meet you. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.